well said, Avi, and I would I would follow up by saying that uh, we have a little too much of uh, we have a little too much protest about um, uh, the possibility of a cosmic neighbor. Um, it, it absolutely, we have nothing to say that it's impossible. Um, we see increasing uh, evidence of the probability of it, um, and yet we have only. Uh, a handful of natural scientists like yourself who are interested in investigating that and attempting to verify but, but, but th it. Think also of the alternative. Suppose someone says, you know, I'm down to earth. I don't believe anything is coming from elsewhere. Okay, so what are you saying? You're saying basically that the director of national intelligence delivered three reports to the U.S. Congress in which uh, the director said that we are were unable to identify the nature of objects in the sky. What was the message then that the intelligence agencies are not doing their job? I mean, can you imagine that they admit that they're not doing their job? Because if it's not from outside of this earth, it must be some adversarial nation, right? They know what the U.S. is doing. Uh, and so they are basically admitting that adversarial nations are operating in the sky of the United States and they cannot figure out what they are doing. That's specifically what they are saying. If you... If you argue that the UAP have, has nothing to do with extra, so that's a very serious matter. Why isn't that by itself convincing people to pay a lot of attention to it? So in both cases, whether it's human made or extraterrestrial, uh, I think it carries heavy consequences and we need to take it seriously. Well, I think that's a really good place to end because I know you need to go. Um, just so the audience understands, I, you, you know, you pointed out um, the obvious about um, the statements and, and uh, reports coming from uh, three different directors of national intelligence now about the UAP topic. And, uh, and you've, you've pointed that out as a scientist who wants hard data, but you're saying, look, this is, this is testimony to something and we need to absolutely pay attention to it. Exactly. And then, um, um, you know, we need to figure it out and it, it requires um, scientists, it requires funding. Uh, so let's just, um, uh, you know, look out and, and, and figure it out. If the government has some data that they want to figure out, I'll be happy to help them. Uh, altogether, I think it would make the coming uh, decade exciting. And science is fun. It's not a, a burden. It's not a, a facade where you need to maintain uh, some public image and, and basically tell the public, don't even think about this or that. That's not what science is about. Science is about, okay, well, any question is allowed. Uh, any conjecture is allowed. But then let's use hard evidence uh, to figure out the answer, which is the approach of uh, the Soccer World Organization, FIFA, uh, when there is a, a controversial uh, goal, uh, they don't go around and ask, uh, you know, the players, the, the goalkeeper or the audience, what do you think uh, was out there? It's not a matter of opinion. They just go to the cameras uh, and look at the video. And, uh, and that's what I'm doing in the context of the Galileo project. Okay, well, thank you. Um, we can continue if you want to, but I, I believe you have to go. So I will... Uh... Um, yeah, I have one, uh, a, a few more minutes. If you want uh, one last uh, question, I, I'll be glad to. Well, let's. Okay, I'll 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 ask a last question then, uh, which which you know concerns your the philosophical dimension of your scientific thinking. Um, I've heard you both in this interview, uh, in uh, public talks, private conversations, other interviews. Um, engage in, uh, you know, not uh, unrigorous conjecture, but serious speculation about, um, you know, what a, a non-human intelligence or extraterrestrial intelligence might be like. And I've heard you uh, talk about everything from uh, something uh, biological to something that uh, would be difficult to fathom, uh, even to something, uh, once I heard you say a few years ago, that, that could uh, uh, simulate a universe even, so that we might, we, we might think that uh, the only other kind of intelligence is something uh, strange, but still, still a little bit commensurate with us. And you said, well, it may be something that actually is so beyond our imagination that we really have to stretch to start to think about the possibilities. So, so yeah. say a word about the, the models you work with. Um, you know, you can't investigate them exactly, but you still have them uh, driving your imagination when you do research. Yeah. So we have to keep in mind that the size of the human brain uh, was maximized uh, to um, amount to uh, 
20% uh, of the metabolic power of the human body. You know, our brains could not have become bigger. They consume 20% of the power of the human body. Uh, and that's what limits our cognitive abilities. You know, we think that we are very smart. We eat other animals that uh, we believe are dumber than us. If you just look at the menu of any restaurant. Um, uh, and uh, the point is that you can imagine that on another planet around another star, you know, maybe the brain size was larger because of different circumstances. Uh, and that would mean that uh, uh, we are unable to fully understand how intelligent they are. Uh, for them, we are just like ants on the pavement. You know, we are doing our thing. We are engaging in conflicts. We are building our castles, you know, like what we think are amazing creations. We send a golden record of music but um, and, and of images of what we uh, what represents us but in fact all of this is complete nonsense compared to what a higher level of intelligence would contemplate and that's quite possible now of course there is also uh, artificial intelligence you know we are creating a form of intelligence that may supersede our cognitive abilities simply because it will have more parameters in the neural network that we create um, and then it will give us also a sense of modesty because it's like giving birth to a child that is much smarter than you are. Uh, and so, um, uh, you know, one way or another, either with artificial intelligence, our own creation, or with alien intelligence, and by the way, both of them are AI, <laughs> abbreviated as AI, in both cases, we might uh, realize that, you know, there is something beyond us. Now, you may say, how do we recognize something beyond us? Well, um, first of all, we will see that it's not familiar. It's different. Uh, secondly, we would see that it accommodates to what we are uh, when it communicates with us. But then uh, uh, we think that it's doing one thing, but it actually is doing something bigger and better or uh, beyond what we thought it's doing. Uh, so if we communicate with it, uh, it, we might realize that you know, we are not the smartest, that it's sort of like an oracle that can tell you things that you don't, you are unable to forecast, uh, which may represent a higher level of science, may represent a higher level of intelligence. So I, I see that as an opportunity for us to grow, to learn, to, to be modest. Uh, you know, the traditional way of being modest was that of religions. They told us there is a God and it's superhuman. I'm saying it could also boil down to, even for secular people, boil down to recognizing that there is an entity out there that is smarter than us and we better be modest and learn from it. It's just like having a smarter kid in your class. Uh, I mean, you can complain about it. You can ignore that, which is most, what most kids do. But uh, if you are smart enough, you will learn from that kid and try to be better. Yes, yes, well said. When and we appreciate the call for intellectual and, and scientific modesty, um, both in the face of uh, anomalous data, but also um, uh, in the face of testimony going to Congress about things that um, we couldn't imagine being said there uh, even five years ago. So right. thank you, Avi, for being with us. Uh, thank you, as always, for your insights. Um, and thank you for your recent research. We look forward to hearing more about 3i Atlas and your other projects, the observatories and uh, 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 the Galileo project generally. So thanks a lot for being with us. Thanks for having me. And uh, I look forward to revelations in the coming years. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, we are having our symposium in uh, Italy at the end of October. If you're interested in joining us to see many of our advisory board members and scientists we work with uh, speak in public, uh, just go to the soulfoundation.org to register. Um, we would also uh, ask uh, that you consider membership. That's a way to support our work. Um, and if there are people out there that are considering um, uh, larger financial support for UAP related research, we have a number of projects that could use your support from uh, my co-founder Gary Nolan's uh, material science work on alleged UAP materials to my own ethnographic research with uh, witnesses to UAP and uh, so-called experiencers um, to our director of technology, Jonathan Berte's AI-driven research on um, the history of um, U.S. government secrecy on UAP, and also to a new epidemiological project uh, that we're undertaking uh, that would concern um, the decision-making of Americans uh, 
uh, uh, with different religious and ethnic backgrounds um, in the face of a disclosure event from the United States government. Um, so if you are interested in supporting us, uh, drop us a line at uh, the following email address, gifts at the uh, soulfoundation.org. Uh, again, that is gifts at the soulfoundation.org. Um, and again, consider uh, membership with us and attending our symposium. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.